Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. And I'm excited for today's episode. We have a guest from the other side of the world, which is fantastic. We are uh, we overcame the scheduling woes. And this was, this was a fun one to put together. It took 37 emails, uh, a <laughs> lot of different calendar invites, but we are here and I'm jacked up. We're talking about a topic that is so over talked about marketing and sales, but it's different because we're talking about the dirty word of influence, but how to do it the right way and how to not be sleazy and cringy. And I have an expert business coach and strategist, Kat Miller with me. Kat, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So great to be here with Brandon. Thank you for the 37 emails and getting this happening. <laughs> Half of them were from you, just for the record. <laughs> But no, seriously, uh, it, I'm excited to have you here. I'm, I'm glad we made this work because I love hearing not only perspectives from experts, but experts around the world. And one of the things that I've found it, it, just from hosting this podcast is talking to people from other countries outside of the U.S., you have a wildly different view of sales and marketing uh, in particular. There's, there's just a, a totally different way of doing business. And I really like sharing those perspectives on this show. So I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have to say. So sales, marketing, influence, three words that nobody wants to hear any more on, but we're going to talk about them anyway. So Kat, <laughs> what is it that, that, what is it that we're talking about? Authentic influence. How, how do you define that in the context of sales and marketing? Yeah, well, first of all, authentic influence is, is in my definition, which I just totally made up. I didn't, I didn't Google or get a dictionary definition, but um, first of all, let's talk about what it's not. It's not manipulating people for your own personal gain. It's not pressuring people into compliance or, uh, you know, trying to get them to do what you want to do. And I think that's why people get a bit cringy when it comes to the topic of influence or the topic of persuasion. And when, when you bring your humanity, your heart, your soul, your care into your business, um, authentic influence is really how you show up in every way because we're always influencing each other, right? Like, have you ever been in a conversation where you're having such a great conversation and then someone joins and the whole mood drops and, and you just think, wow, that person has has changed the feeling of this group in a second. And then on the other side, you can be having a really boring conversation and then someone joins and the whole conversation lifts. And so I just think about the power we have as humans to affect each other. You know, we're social social creatures and we know this, but I think for us to be <clears throat> intentional in our marketing, to think, how am I helping someone see a new perspective here? Rather than checking the box and just posting on social media and just sharing our knowledge, it's like, what belief am I trying to shift? How can I remove a barrier that someone has towards getting what they want? And so you both are on the same side towards getting that person what they want, as opposed to, I need to convince them and change their mind. Like I've always hated that, that approach in marketing and sales. And I've done so much marketing and sales training where we're, we're trying to obliterate the objection and, you know, get that person onto our side. And, and I just I just felt so repulsed by it. So when I started in business 20 years ago and I was going to these different events and hearing this stuff, um, I just thought, if that's business, I don't want it. I don't want to be in business <laughs> if that's what I have to do. Um, but I've realized that actually the approach that's worked for me is is building relationship and being able to really understand someone and then thinking, how do I put that back into my marketing? And it's just getting yourself back into your idle client's mind, really. Yeah, that's I, I love that perspective because, um, you know, full, full transparency here for, for you, the listener, me and my business partner um, in our company, What If, we met in a group that was all about learning influence. And that's why for us, we really do consider it a dirty word because in that context, it was about kind of faking influence and, and faking your authenticity, which is another 
a whole different rabbit hole we could go down to show up the way that the person you're talking to needed to hear you. So, I mean, obviously that didn't resonate with either of us because we now call it a dirty word, but how do you kind of get past this in, in marketing? Cause the, the overall theme of the gurus out there is breaking down objections, um, you know, combating their fears or agitating their fears and their pains to make them want to make a decision out of pain or avoiding fear, avoiding failure. So how do you, how do you approach this? Achieving pleasure, achieving success. What's the general approach you take in your marketing? Uh, well, I think the difference is it's thinking of authentic influence because I know what you mean about that fake authenticity. Like, let's do a vulnerable post so that so that people can really feel your heart, and and then it's it's almost like you can tell that it's putting on this emotion. I, I don't know. For me, it's just a feeling. I'm like, I feel like this person's following a formula, and it just it's not really moving me. So, how do we balance creativity and structure? Right. So we need some structure so that people can will be hooked in and engaged but also it's it's not just the way we show up in terms of sorry it's not just the way we do our brochures like write our posts it's it's about you it's about you as a person because if you are doing cool stuff then and talking about it you don't need to use all these tricks and tactics you you are living an awesome life and people want to be part of that so when you do cool things and and talk about it you know show up um in a way because you're working on yourself you know it's not just learning this specific skill it's like how am i going to turn up as the person that people actually want to be you know modeling as a role model it's it's every touch point you have in your business you know it's the way you speak to your staff your team the way you communicate with your clients and i think when you truly do care people feel it you don't have to fake it because you just are that person so so yes i've got formulas and and things for people with with their content because a lot of people have a lot of gold in them that they're sharing but people aren't seeing it because it's it hasn't really um maybe it's maybe it's been entertaining but it hasn't actually shifted a belief so it's credibility plus connection how do we show that we're trustworthy we can help that person that 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 we have what it takes to get them a result and then how do we add this connection piece where we've been personable and human and and relatable and 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 soulful i know i went on a bit of a tangent but <laughs> did that kind of answer your question no that's perfect so i i want to unpack that i want to unpack how we start to shift a belief um and and be transparent be authentic the real authentic and help people see what what can we help them achieve? What's the transformation we can help them go through? What I want to avoid and be very specific about this, I'm speaking for me. I'm not speaking for Kat. I firmly disagree with the, the notion out there that says you just have to be one step ahead of your client um, on social media. So we are not talking to those people. I, the clients we serve are seven, eight figure business owners. Um, they have teams. They've They've been there, done that, and they know what they're doing. I just, I personally don't believe that social media should be a place where you rent a jet or a Lamborghini and go post a picture and then try to steal somebody's $5,000. So uh, before we move forward, just wanted to get clear the air out there. This is not one of those shows. Um, right. We're talking about the real foundations of authentic marketing, authentic influence and persuasion. And I want to now, from your perspective, how do you start in your content to shift beliefs? with a real authentic transparent view of what you're doing mm. um so i look at the brain and different neuroscience um when it comes to marketing because i think really understanding how we process information how we absorb information i'm not a neuroscience i'm a business coach but i use i use a lot of my understanding and from the psychology world so there's lots and lots of different things out there. The one that resonated me, with me the most is three parts of the brain, because I love the rule of three. Anything that's three is simple and it's easy to remember. And my clients love it as well, because it's just simple. So we talk about the three layers of the brain. We talk about the, the, the hind brain or reptilian brain, which is you know our oldest survival part of our brain. And when we're looking through social media, when we're scanning, we're using that part of our brain because it's survival focused. So 
what a lot of people do is try to be really super clever and intelligent and literally if your brain is looking at something like that and it feels too complex or it feels too boring it will just scan past because it's a decision making part of your brain and it's super fast like it processes information like yeah nah like if you've ever watched someone if you've ever been on a train and watched people scrolling, I don't know if you've seen that. It's, it's quite fascinating to think about what people stop on. Like, why did that person stop on that? I like kind of looking at, at, at this human behavior stuff. And obviously, it's our filter systems. You know, we we stop the scroll because of the way we've, we're filtering for our values, our beliefs. And so I mean, just from a very practical level, making sure that the first part of all of our marketing is simple clear talking to the 10 year old child and it's like are you this yes are you that yes because people want to identify themselves to know if they're wasting time in that piece of content so the first thing that i look at when i'm looking at because i do a lot of makeovers on people's marketing is is it too boring is it too complicated because the hind brain or the you know the base part of the brain just will, will just reject it um it's got to be an easy yes yes this is for me yes i'm going to get value from this this is going to be a good use of the time um the next thing we look at is the emotional part of the brain the emotion and the imagination so this is evoking the limbic system and so are we getting them to feel something hear something see something so we create a scene, we drop them into a movie scene in their mind. Because once we've got past, it's like a gatekeeper. Once we've got past the instinct, we get to the imagination. So they're easy to remember, instinct, imagination, intelligence. Once we get to the imagination part, you've got through their instinct. So you've hooked their attention, basically. Now we need to talk about their world and what they're experiencing in their world. So we don't need to like I don't like that word agitate because people already know their problems we can I we can show them yes I get your problem I understand it but I'm not going to hold you there for ages in your pain I'm going to talk about the cause of the problem and the solution to the problem because then that person instantly feels some relief and some hope and oh wow she actually really um, can help you with this and then we go to the intelligence and we back it up so we'll give evidence we'll give some kind of statistics or our experience or something where people go oh right okay there's trust here um you know it's got through the gatekeeper of instinct it's got through my imagination i can see or hear or feel how this is going to work in my life and now we're getting to the reason the logic and and making sense of it and they're just three simple things if you just think instinct imagination intelligence if you cover those three things and you work up the brainstem because a lot of people start with intelligence if we go up and and i use this in most interactions with people i know that if i'm meeting someone at a networking event um, and i start talking all you know analytical language that person's just still getting their bearings they're still in that kind of survival mode it's it's most of this is happening un unconsciously right <laughs> um so i know it's a very simplistic explanation but from a influence level um that is what I've found has made the biggest difference because it's just easy to remember. You know, it's not a big formula that you have to remember. It's just three things. Yeah, and I, while you were talking though, I'm, I'm thinking it's it's simple, it's three things, but all of that is happening probably within like 10 to 15 seconds when, right. when someone's actually digesting that information. So the first part, the instinct, like that split second, like you said, from there, if they're still engaged, you have to cover those next two things really, really quickly and really well too. So my mind then jumped to, all right, assuming we're, I haven't heard of the instinct one. So I want to, I want to touch on that for sure. But the, the emotion and the intellect, assuming, you know, your ideal client, like you understand what they want to feel after working with you, after buying your product or service, and then, you know, intellectually, like the stats and data they need to hear in order to make that buying decision how do you get inside their head for the instinct piece that seems very almost by chance if you will is there is there a way to actually like know your client that well uh part of it does come you know obviously with time if you're attracting the same type of person having conversations every day it will it will almost happen organically that you'll just speak to them um i find you know like we obviously do ideal client analysis and things like that but 
I mean, mine kind of came naturally, like by by just having lots and lots of conversations and then realizing what people's biggest problems were. So rather than trying to make up what their problems are, it was literally what people kept telling me and writing down the words that they were telling me and then feeding that back in my marketing. And I know that sounds super obvious, but I think a lot of people don't do it. They they use AI or they'll try and Google keywords instead of actually just having loads and loads of conversations with people. And so I would um, take coaching notes. I did hundreds of coaching sessions for free and just wrote down limiting beliefs like I like back in the day when I first started as a coach over 10 years ago it was I would write hand write and then highlight with blue limiting belief limiting belief and so I would I would just start to see these common patterns where people let's say it will take sales for example sales equals um sleazy car salesman snake oil like all these different things people would say so then I would take that language and put it back out into the marketing because it's because the instincts on high alert like if it hears anything that thinks oh she's going to make me be like this person this cringy person like I'm out you know that's talking to the instinct so it comes from lots of conversations but also it's just understanding the way that part of the brain operates like the instincts there are it hate you know there's things that hates it hates boredom hates complexity so anything that's just too complex you feel like you're not smart enough to understand it so you jump out um it, if you speak to it like the child part of us which sounds you know it sounds a bit um dishonoring to people's intelligence but it's just a different part of the brain that if if they have an easy yes if they like i get this i'm on board with this i'm you know that yeah so there's understanding your ideal client by just absorbing conversations and then understanding that part of the brain. No, I mean, I don't think it's insulting because I, I, I know for like email subject lines and stuff, there's, you put them through filters to like grade it. The one I use, I think it's called uh, sendcheckit.com, not sponsored by them, but if they want to sponsor me, just reach out <laughs> um, if you guys want to sponsor the show. Um, but they grade your subject line for word usage and they, they do it on like a grade level, like a, a elementary school grading level. So the goal the green is like first through third grade. And it makes sense because when you're, when you're talking about filtering through things, especially on like a super quick basis, email inbox, you probably have a little bit more time than social media. But even on social media, if if you're what you're saying is if you're making the brain analyze too much, it's just like, no, I'm not here for this. I, I need to I need to be sucked in for lack of a better term and engage with this or it's it's not on my radar so i think that's that's kind of another conversation because or another question email you're there for a different purpose versus instagram or TikTok or whatever platform we're on we're there for a, a purpose of maybe entertainment so how do you balance your your instinctual attraction to your ideal client from inbox to social media is there do you put some thought behind that and say okay i know my ideal client wants in their inbox but now i have a kind of a totally unique message for social media yeah and i th i think if you can really just think about okay people are on instagram they want entertainment they're in scan mode they're in like highly stimulation mode um this we're still scanning whether we're on social media or, or inbox but inbox you've got that a little bit more level of trust because if you open someone's email there's already trust there you're not being so intrusive so i think in social media we're, we're literally interrupting people so we've got to bear that in mind that it's got to be worth interrupting so you can you can leverage your same message you don't necessarily have to create a whole different piece of content but just the way we we do it can be slightly different so um, shorter words, shorter short sentences, you know, things that are easily absorbable, adding some emojis, bringing it to life a little bit more on social media um, because, because we're just, we're still more in the instinct part on social media. So on in the inbox, that person already knows you. So there's already some assumed trust. You don't have to build it as much usually. And it usually means that someone already thinks that your email is going to be valuable in order to open it. And then we don't need to, then it's genuinely like this person wants to read what I'm saying as opposed to I've got to use all these tactics to, you know, <laughs> clickbaity stuff. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of clickbait, especially in the titles of, of these episodes, um, because we do want people to watch them. But the whole like social media, 
I, I really can't stand it. I just got to be honest with you. Um, I, I think it's very valuable, but the whole thing is just like so out there for me. What I would love if is if there was like a, a checklist to go through in order to help me figure out what I was doing wrong with my social media. What's what's this on the screen, Kat? This is very interesting timing. Um, so <laughs> this, this conversation has been phenomenal, but I want to hear about your client attraction checklist because the, the world of social media is too complex for simple people like me, which you would think I would thrive because I'm such a simple creature, but really it's complex for me. So tell me what, what is your client attraction checklist and, and who should go download it? Uh, so I created the checklist for anyone that's kind of going, where do I start when it comes to attracting clients? So it starts right from the beginning. Um, if you just need more clients and you want to follow a step by step, it's got tick boxes and it's just basically saying, do this today, do this today, because we can get so overwhelmed, right? So just having a just go do this, get the blinkers on, focus on that. It's for service providers predominantly, um, people that are wanting to attract um, clients into their service business, like coaches, consultants, you know, course creators. Um, yeah, go check it out. I think you'll get a lot of value from it. Well, I'm going to have to because I just admitted that I hate social media. But I think the real question is, um, and, and this is where a lot of people get hung up, myself included, on average, how much time do you spend creating content on social media each day? Like, I, I understand the checklist is going to walk us through, but the, the things that we should be doing, but I've heard everything from 10 seconds to three hours, and that's just too big of a range for me. So <laughs> your words, what's a what's an average amount of time to spend on social media? Uh, so it comes down to what you're doing. And if you're doing video versus writing, you know, sometimes writing can take a lot longer. People are less forgiving with mistakes in writing. So that's why I like doing a lot of video because it's quick. So I personally just do one video a week, which is about 20, 25 minutes. And then I splice it up and I turn that into shorter videos. Um, so I just concentrate on this one big piece of content a week. And then I'll take that and I'll make social media posts from it. Um, my VA will turn that into an email, a blog. It'll go up on my YouTube channel. So I'm a big fan of leveraging it rather than trying to think of something every single day. It's like one big topic and I put all of my energy into that just once a week and then that all gets split up. So that's how I personally do it. I'm so busy working with my clients that I don't have three hours a day to film my life or, but I don't want to be an, um, a, a social media influencer. You know, I'm working with clients and, and just getting, getting them to, <clears throat> I guess, create in a way that's going to be doable for their lifestyle. Um, it's better to do one or two quality pieces of content than posting three times a day just to tick the box. <laughs> no point in that. Yeah, I, I love that advice. And um, it, if I may share with you, the listener, I hate social media. Like I said, like I can't make that more clear. I, I'm just going to say that word for word. <laughs> but I knew I needed to be on it because... How am I going to connect with people if not on social media? So I said to myself, what can I do that adds value not only to me, but to my ideal client? And who else could we add value to? So I said, let's create a podcast. Let's create a video podcast where we can do not an episode a week, but an episode a day. And we can splice that up into a bunch of smaller pieces of content. It serves the guest. It serves my ideal client. And maybe eventually it serves me too. We don't monetize the podcast, but we have gotten clients reach out to us watching the episodes. Our guests have gotten clients to reach out to them. It serves all parties. And I think it's the biggest like hack in terms of social media marketing. So uh, for me, like you said, it was, it was leveraging what works for my lifestyle in my time that I can continue to do consistently. So Kat, I appreciate you coming here and making this, topic of influencing people with authenticity and attracting people into your business, you've, you've simplified it for me, for sure. And definitely for the audience as well. So I can't thank you enough for, for coming here and sharing your expertise. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it. Loved our conversation. Same here. And if you want to check out more of Kat and the client attraction checklist that we talked about, it is on the screen. If you're watching, if you're listening, wherever you are watching or listening, it's down in the description down below, along with all of her social media links. So you can go check out what she's putting out on social media, how she's attracting clients and learn more from that client attraction checklist too. So wherever you are, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss 
a second of this totally ridiculous show where hopefully we provide you some sort of value or at the very least 20 minutes of entertainment every single day of the week. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for being here.